All right, so we're going to do a couple of examples with cylinders here. Um, the first one is similar to one that we um, did in the previous video. Uh, again, it's a, it's a parabola, but this time it's in the yz plane. The directrix is in the yz plane. So we have coordinate system. There we are. Okay. So we'll label as usual x, y, and z. And so z equals y squared is going to be parabola as usual, right? There's the parabola in the yz plane. But now we want to extend that sort of in the direction of the x-axis, right? So we want to think about drawing these lines parallel to the x-axis that pass through our cylinder, like so. Right, and again, um, these are never going to look amazing, so we just sort of do our best job and see what we can come up with, right? So something like that. Try to give us an idea of, of how that's going to look. Um, how does that look? It's not great, is it? But, you know, there's the, the base of it is here. Right. You think about sketching it up. Yeah, you can sort of give it a go like that at first, and then you're like, oh, that's kind of terrible. I mean, you can sort of, you can do something like this to make it look a little bit nicer, to sort of draw some edges, um, right? Um, draw the, the bottom, maybe. Somewhere it's something like this. It's hard to get it to line up sometimes, so let's see. Like, that's the bottom there. And and then just try to connect maybe the front. Yeah. Let's try drawing this one a little bit higher up. Like so. There we go a little bit more like what we want. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. Even that is not great, is it? So how do we draw this to make it look okay? I think you've got to start with one of the cylinders, or one of the parabolas, and then kind of go from there. Something like that. And the, sort of the more you try on this, the worse it ends up looking. So <laughs> you, you do your best to give an idea of the, of the shape there, this sort of trough shape, and hopefully it's good enough. Okay, what about x equals sine z? Now that's, that's a, I would say, a bit of a trickier one. And at some point, I mean, at some point, honestly, you let the computer do these. The computer is going to do a better job than we will ever do it, kind of coming up with these. Um, x equals sine of z. So now we're thinking of, so z is our independent variable, x is dependent, and, and y is kind of free. We're going to slide things that way. Um, so x is going to sort of run from, you know, from minus 1 to, to 1 um, as we vary z. So this is going to, it's going to be kind of tricky to draw, to be honest, but it's something like this. Um, all right, there's x equals sine z, and I probably don't necessarily have that exactly right. Um, and then we want to kind of extend it. We should do both directions, but extend it one direction just to sort of give the idea of the of the shape of that thing. So this kind of wavy shape that kind of slides back and forth as you go. Um, that's, that's not really a very convincing drawing, is it? I would say you want to go to the textbook, look at the computer generated one that you can interact with there, rotate around and, and get a much better look at how that's going to go, right? Um, 
I don't know. Maybe there are people out there that teach classes where they where they expect perfection in these sorts of sketches, but I, I, I don't think there's too many of them. I think most people are going to try their best at doing a reasonable drawing of these things and move on. Um, the main reason why you want to probably get comfortable with drawing these things is you will eventually, you know, be looking at doing, say, um, integrals and things where you're trying to sketch the region of integration. You want to have a rough idea of what that thing looks like, you know, at least enough of an idea so you can set up the integral. Um, it never has to be a work of art.